way, this is Alex from Set from alexmsetcoder.com.dev, and in this video, what I want to do is talk about uh, p using pip in virtual environments. This is not a video about any particular tool for setting up virtual environments, particularly just using Python, the built-in sort of Python virtual environment module. So let's just talk about Python for a moment. Okay, so first off, generally, when you want to use once you kind of get really comfortable with Python, the language, and what you can do with just pure, the built-in standard libraries of Python, so I generally would focus on learning that first and getting comfortable with that. Uh, eventually, you're going to want to, you know, expand into the world of packages and libraries and frameworks that are in the Python world, which typically you would find in the PyPy um, repository. So this is PyPy. Okay. So here I can go look up like all the different types of things that exist in Python, like if I want to look for frameworks, if I want to look for whatever. Okay, and then if I click on any of these, I can then find this pro this command that will let me install it using a tool called pip. Pip is how we install Python packages. But the way Python ins works by default is that it installs everything into this sort of global yeah, um, thing. So basically it's installed for everything you have, every Python script you, you have. But you don't always want that, because again at the end of the day you're going to want to be able to package what you use for a particular project in a way that you can share it outside of your computer. So if you just install everything globally, it's going to be really hard to parse out, hey, what are the things that I use for this particular project? So that way somebody else who uses your code can only download the things they need to run that code. So the way in Python you generally isolate it is you create what's called a virtual environment. Okay, and a virtual environment just means that you kind of have this like local version of Python that installs libraries locally that's isolated from your global Python install. Okay, and generally the way you do that in Python, you would just type in Python-m, so you're going to use a module that's built into Python it's called VEND, virtual environment, and then you give it a name. You can give it any name you want. I always just call it VEND. I think that's what most people do. Okay, and what that's going to do, it's going to create this folder slash VEND. If you look inside of it, what it does is that it has like Basically, you're a, a copy of Python. That's essentially, essentially what you just did. You created a copy of Python, and what you can do is you can run this activate script. And this activate script, what it's going to do is turn on this virtual environment. So going forward in this particular terminal session, so again, if I were to close the terminal and reopen it, the virtual environment wouldn't be on anymore. I'd have to turn it back on again. will be on. So, the, so let's try that out. So I would type in source, because I want to run this executable. And I would say dot slash because I'm currently in this Python 22-2 folder. And in there's the VNV folder. So in the same folder, there's the VNV. In there, there's a folder called bin, which stands for binary. And in there, there's a script called activate. If I run that, I then see this parentheses VNV there. Okay, so that means the virtual environment is on. So now if I install things, so let's say I want to build like a web application using uh, Flask. So I do pip install flask to install the flask library okay it's going to install it for me in the virtual environment so i can do now i can do pip list pip list is going to list anything i've installed in the particular environment that i have active so that's what i have so install flask when you, inst when you install flask a few other things get installed so you see those as well um, but that's what i have installed so far okay so that's what the pip list command does now sometimes you want to generate a list of your um, stuff so that way you can uh, distribute it to other people. Okay, so basically what I would do is I would do pip freeze. Now watch what happens when I just do the pip freeze command by itself. It just creates a list. Okay, so these are the dependencies. This is everything I have currently installed in this environment and the specific version that I'm currently using. Now typically you're going to want to export this to a separate file. The file name doesn't particularly matter. But the standard name that you'll see is going to be requirements.txt. So uh, what I would do is I would do pip freeze, and then I would use this little arrow. And basically what this arrow means in terminal, it just means take whatever the output of this command is and write it to the file on the right. So I'm saying, hey, write it to a file called requirements.txt. And then that's going to, if I look here, there's the list of my, my, my packages. So that way later on, if I would like to push this code to GitHub, and then download it on another computer to I would get to set up a new virtual environment on that new computer 
and then I can reinstall everything by just doing pip pip install dash r require in the name of the file requirements.txt and then that's going to go through that file and install all those libraries okay here we did it really quick because I just installed them so we're all good okay so that's how you work with virtual environments again all it is is you're just creating these little isolated environments for your different projects so that way you can say hey these are the dependencies I use for this project these are the dependencies I use for this project so you can replicate it but once you've installed it and again if you're wondering if something is installed you can always just do a pip list when something is installed you can use it so I could now create like a new file you know we'll just say like a server.py and I can import flask now so I can like import flask okay I can import flask because I have flask installed and now I can use any of the things that are inside of flask so if I type in flask dot see I can see all the different things that are inside of flask because it recognizes it as installed okay and now how would I use it I would go read the documentation so if I'm using whatever library pandas uh, pullers uh, for like data or numpy if I'm using flask fast API Django masonite for like web applications whatever it is I can go look through it through here okay um, but yeah so that's pretty much how that works if you want to learn how to use pip now just keep in mind there are other types of ways to set up Python environments okay if you ever hear the term anaconda anaconda is just essentially an alternative to pip that's specific specified for the data community so more for like data science um, and that has a that uses a whole separate repository separate from PyPy so if I do if I install something with anaconda it's installing it from a slightly different place which means it could be a different version so you got to be careful for that um, and then two it, um, there's also other tools to help you set up uh, virtual environments the two main ones are gonna be like pip env and poetry and the difference between what these two do is that they're gonna give you a style more similar to like JavaScript where you have like a you know like in JavaScript you have this package.json file that tracks all your dependencies and when you install it automatically updates that file instead of me having to create this requirements.txt um, and it also has some other little bells and whistles if you use poetry or pip env um, the workflow is going to be a little bit different because you'll it's a different command to install things with poetry or pip env um, the the dimensions of how that pip env file or the poetry file works that tracks the dependencies is going to be a little, the semantics a little bit different um, but generally like the standard way is this way like this is going to be sort of like the default built into python way um, a lot of people really like poetry and pip env i certainly like the idea of them but that's more like once you get kind of comfortable with the basics then i would explore those and see if you like those tools better uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that my name is alex Musset from alex have a great day and enjoy